Welcome to the Daily Charge Up, your daily dose of EV news. I'm Ben Sullins and today is Monday, August 5th, 2024. Let's dive into the news. Wireless charging for phones became a thing not long ago, so why not wireless charging for cars? EV companies are pursuing the technology and so far, it's slow. Wireless systems typically reach speeds of only 11 kilowatts, far underperforming the 50 to 350 kilowatts of plug-in fast charging systems. However, all that could be about to change. The Department of Energy's Oak Ridge National Laboratory, ORNL, just set a new record for the fastest wireless charging session on a light-duty passenger vehicle at 270 kilowatts. They did this on a modified Porsche Taycan lent by Volkswagen Group of America. ORNL used a novel polyphase wireless charging system that allows for higher power density in smaller coils to set the new record. The distance between the sender unit on the ground and the receiver on the car was under 5 inches, giving an impressive efficiency of 95%. How does the wireless charging compare to plug-in? Well, the lab's charger was able to increase the car's state of charge by 50% in 10 minutes, so the performance is pretty much identical. While the technology is promising, it may still be some time before consumers are able to charge their EVs wirelessly. Improvements are needed to make ORNL's innovation cost-effective and easier to manufacture on a large scale. In budget-saving news, Ford has reintroduced a $1,500 discount for United Auto Workers members on the purchase of new 2025 EV models like the F-150 Lightning and Mustang Mach-E. This discount can be combined with other savings offers from Ford and is available nationwide until December 31, 2025. Ford introduced new savings to all customers through its summer sales event, including 0% APR offers and up to $9,500 in rebates on electric vehicles. The union discount was negotiated last year, but originally applied to everyone. The extension is for members only, which makes for a nice incentive. If you're wondering how Ford EVs are doing generally, I've got some numbers for you. Ford's all-electric sales in the U.S. increased by 31% this July, with a total of 8,242 units sold. This marks the sixth consecutive month of growth for Ford's EV sales. The brand's EV share improved to 5%, up from 3.8% a year ago, meaning that one in 20 new Ford vehicles sold in July was all-electric. Overall, Ford has sold over 52,000 all-electric vehicles in the U.S. in 2024, which is nearly a 64% increase compared to last year. The company's hybrid vehicle sales grew by 47%, making that segment twice as big as its EV segment. The three main electric models from Ford, Mustang Mach-E, F-150 Lightning, and E-Transit, contributed to the growth in July. The Mach-E remains the best-selling model with over 4,500 units sold while the F-150 Lightning saw an impressive increase of 82% compared to last year. In terms of production and inventory levels, there were some fluctuations noted for each model. For example, production of the Mach-E decreased significantly compared to last year which could be due to matching factory output with demand. Looking ahead, sales projections for models like the F-150 Lightning and Mustang Mach-E will depend on how they perform in Q4 against competitors like Tesla Cybertruck, the best-selling electric truck during Q2. My read on all the above is that Ford is content playing the long game. When you look at their growth in the EV space, it's undeniable that their strategy is working. Don't listen to short-sighted investors that get upset every month their company lags behind Tesla. The EV market is growing and Ford is growing right along with it. And speaking of growth, Chinese car manufacturer BYD set a new record in July for global plug-in electric car sales. They sold 340,799 units last month, with over 12,600 of those being EVs from their sub-brands. This is a 30.5% increase compared to the previous year. BYD has shifted its focus towards plug-in hybrids recently. In July, they sold almost 211,000 hybrids, which accounted for 62% of their total sales volume and was a 67% increase year over year. Fully electric car sales decreased by 3.5%. So far this year, BYD has sold over 1.9 million passenger plug-in electric cars, an increase of 29% compared to last year's numbers. In terms of future projections, BYD aims to achieve an average growth rate of over 20%, 
reaching around 3.6 million units in total sales for the upcoming years. The best-selling nameplate for BYD in July was the Chin family, with over 73,500 units sold. Next best was the Song family with around 65,200 units. Both Chin and Song sales were predominantly of plug-in hybrids. Our last story today gets sticky. If you're an EV driver who misses having a physical gear shift, it's time to consider making the switch to Rivian. The adventurous EV maker has decided to keep physical gear shifters in their cars, unlike the multiple car companies who are moving to digital controls. Getting rid of physical shifters saves costs, and some say it cleans up the look of interiors, but Rivian's CEO, RJ Scaringe, believes keeping physical controls is important to customers. The company will not be including physical heating and air conditioning controls in their EVs, but have added vent position presets to upcoming models, so it'll be easier for drivers to adjust airflow without spending too much time on the touchscreen. As a Rivian owner, I'm glad they're trying to find the right balance between digital and physical controls. Tesla's removal of the drive selector stock seemed unnecessary to me and other consumers. That said, after test driving a Tesla without a gear stock, I got used to it rather quickly. Hopefully, Rivian's combination of the best of the new and traditional tech will lead to more happy customers down the road. That's it for this episode. Make sure to drop us a review on the platform of your choice and share this with anyone else you think would enjoy it. See you back here next time.